I think that the information that is relevant for today is what to do with a growing up athlete as a coach and as an athlete. Because how many of you are athletes here? Hands up. Okay, we'll be doing some work today that will be divided according to the role that you play in sport. So some of you are going to be answering questions as athletes and some of you as coaches. And you will try what happens when we reverse those roles. We're not going to be using PowerPoints. We're not going to be giving a lot of theory. But I'm going to try and show you a few things regarding what happens when the athlete starts to grow up. It's not just in table tennis. It happens in all sports. What is the goal of every athlete that becomes good or successful when they're young? And I'm speaking of young athletes as 12, 13, up to 15 years. What happens in their mind? What is the main shift in the context of their thought? Where do they start looking at? What do they start looking at? Those of you who are athletes. If I ask you, what will you be doing in five years? What will you say? Hmm? Will, you be still, will you still be playing table tennis? Yes. Will you be good? You're supposed to say yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure that all of you who are here are successful. Right? Regardless of your confidence, you should admit it. Right? If you have low confidence, but you're still here, it means you're good to table tennis players. And you start looking probably at adult table tennis, right? How good you're going to be when you're going to be 20, 25, and so on, right? Coaches, what do you start thinking about? How good they're going to be when they're 20, 25? And if you can create top athletes from those athletes that you're coaching right now, would you agree? How many of you are coaching 15-year-olds? Hands up, most of you, because you're here, right? The way things start going is that things start to shift from play, from fun, from enjoyment, from personal progress, to being first, second, making it out of the group, into the quarterfinals, semifinals, and so on. But things start to shift also in the results. Because the moment you start thinking about places instead of what you're supposed to be doing, instead of what your task is, results start to fail. And today I'm just going to try and show you what, how important it is to keep having fun, to keep enjoying yourself up until you stop your career. Not just up until you start playing top table tennis, because at 15 you're not yet top players. I hope the coaches agree with me. All right? Because the moment you start thinking that 15-year-olds are top players, it's finished. I work as a sports psychologist a lot, and I mainly work with top athletes who are grown-ups, but a lot of parents bring their parents, bring their children, and they say, would you work with him? He's a top skier, for example. And I say, how old is he? And say, 12. I'm saying he cannot be a top skier at 12. There's no top sport at 12. It's still play, it's still learning, it's still getting ready for top sport. And today we're going to just touch that a little bit. And that's basically the, I hope, that I will try and explain that to keep having fun is the key to also coming to results eventually for those of you who decide that you still want to invest your time, energy, and basically adapt your life to top sport or the needs of top sport, specifically, in this case, table tennis. So we're not just going to speak, or I'm not going to speak that much. I'm going to get you to work, right? So I would like you to each take one of these pieces of paper and keep them turned down, okay? Don't look at it yet, just, you know blank page upwards. Just keep it turned down, okay? Don't look at it yet. Just could you pass it back? Thank you. Don't look. Don't look. Cheater. <laughs> Who's without a pen? OK, 
I have some coloring pencils, and those of you who don't have a pen, just take one. I know you want pink anyway. Don't avoid the pink color, it's also for male people, don't worry. <laughs> they say that uh, brave men wear pink shirts, so don't worry. And don't avoid taking the black because people who like black are not necessarily depressed, so you just go with what you like. There's, there's some here, so you'll, I think you'll get it. Okay, so do you, does everybody have a piece of paper? Now, I'm going to give you two minutes. And you have two minutes to complete the task. Once you've completed the task, stand up. It's a competition, okay? If you don't make it in two minutes, don't worry, okay? You just won't be the first. That's the only outcome. Okay, so when you turn it around, it's going to be full of math. You're all, all old enough to be able to do this, so the first one who solves all the tasks, stand up, okay? And you have two minutes for this task. Everybody understands? Yeah? Don't start yet, just turn it around. Okay? <laughs> okay, ready, steady, go. <laughs> you can write on the paper, you can do anything, just try and complete it. First, you, you, you started about 10 minutes ago. What? You started 10 minutes ago. She said you have to stand up. 30 more seconds. Okay, 15 more seconds. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, finish. Okay. Okay, now um, the ones standing up, we're going to check for correct solutions. The moment you find a mistake, sit down. Okay? The first one is 18. The second one is 88. 151. 14. Okay, are you listening, guys? 157. So you're out. Sit down. <laughs> 230. 37. And minus 14. I have one correct, but missing one. What was the last one again? Minus 14. The third? One, one, first. 18. 18. Okay, how many of you left standing? Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, how, how many of you had so much fun during this exercise that you would say, I had fun 10 on a scale of 1? One, yeah, okay, 8, 9, yeah, 8, yeah, okay. Anybody have fun 1? Yeah, okay, number 2, how many of you had almost zero fun? Yeah, <laughs> almost zero. Yes, there is a minus five also. <laughs> now just keep those papers, and now everybody's going to need a coloring pe uh, pencil, or the pencils that you have, just try and take one, uh, and distribute what's left. Uh, would you help me distribute those? Yeah. Okay, everybody take one of these. And we're going to do a very similar thing. You'll get a piece of like a mandala like coloring and your job is to color it with one color of course or one pencil with whatever you have but just take your time and do whatever you want with this and you have two minutes time okay you just paint it color it whatever you like with it Okay, uh, with a pencil, with a pen, whatever you have, it makes no difference. So just take your time and work on this for two minutes. Start now. Do the same as me. Everybody, don't worry. 
she's worried that we're going to do a psychological profile. I cannot do a psychological profile of anybody on a piece of <laughs> coloring. You have 15 more seconds. <laughs> okay, five more seconds. Three, two, and you're done. Now we're going to rate levels of enjoyment. Very good. Who enjoyed themselves for one? On a scale of one to ten, again, ten is maximum enjoyment, one is completely boring. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay, eleven, okay. So if I was to do the average enjoyment with the first one and with the second one, would there be a difference? Yes. How much more fun did you have with the second task? I'm sure that a lot more fun. What was the difference between the first and the second task? Pressure. Pressure, yes. Pressure of what? Who's Maybe. going to win, yeah. right? Maybe. And with mathematical calculations, you have a correct or an incorrect solution. If I was to choose the best coloring piece, how could I do that? Would you say that you had more fun because you could focus on the task instead of the outcome? This is usually a common correlation. The moment you start focusing on the task instead of on the outcome, you start enjoying yourselves much more. And the moment you start taking sport as something that is only about competitions, only about results, only about winning, enjoyment decreases and people start to think about how good am I going to be and they forget to focus on what it is that I have to do to be good. We only have a hundred percent of focus. If you try to divide your focus on two different things, you're going to have problems because one of the two things is not going to be as efficient as it could be. You cannot focus 50% on how you play and 50% on how your parents are behaving or how the parents of your players are behaving on the stands. And if you focus completely on what you're supposed to be doing, only then can you be successful. It's the same with a competition. If I focus on if I'm going to win, I cannot focus enough on what I'm trying to do. Basically, my question is, how many of you think that enjoyment is a prerequisite or a condition for you to be successful in sport or for your athletes to be successful in sport? Hands up. If you enjoy yourselves, then you should have a clear idea of what having fun in practice means. So now you have this piece of paper, turn it around, and on the blank side, Write down two things that are the most fun that you do in practice. Two fun things that you can do in practice. Not on a competition, but in practice. For whom? For players or for coaches? For both. Because it's the same thing. A coach, when they're having fun, when you're having fun, when you're enjoying yourselves, you're going to be better coaches. Does everybody have those two things? Do you? Yeah? How many times in the past 10 days did you do exactly this in practice? Every day? Do you do it? Very good. Who didn't do this in the past 10 days? Anybody who has something written that hasn't happened in a long time in practice? Did anybody write things that can contain a drill exercise, like footwork for two hours? Did anybody write this down? No. Did anybody write down running in circles for 30 minutes? No. 
Let's say, for example, you have a very driven coach. They might tell you to do this. Uh, if you would have to do something like this, would you have fun? Depends. Depends. OK, on what? If it's if it's if you can make it competitive and you can make it if you can make what you're trying to do enjoyable yeah then it can be okay but how do you do how do you make running around footwork or running around in circles enjoyable you can make it like a competition or have some stipulations or but we just found that a competition can be stressful can cause pressure can decrease enjoyment actually but one of my one of my points the most enjoyable in practice is when it's competitive I think the okay. enjoy it more when the practice is competitive. Yeah. It's a rare occasion. A lot of people like to have time for themselves as well. Not when it's competitive all the time, it's too much. How do you make difficult things enjoyable? How do you do that? By adding enjoyable stuff into the practice. Right? You need to do drills. You need 150 repetitions of something, or you need 10,000 repetitions of something. And how do you do that? By adding fun elements into this.